Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video and the next video I will look at the roles and features in Windows Server 2016. By the end of this video you'll understand what roles and features are and how they work. In the next video I will demonstrate how to install these roles and features on my Windows Server 2016 server. For now though it's important that you first understand what roles and features are, so let's get started. First things first, what exactly are roles and features? Well, when Windows Server 2016 is first installed, it is by default a very basic server operating system. In other words, straight out of the box, there's not an awful lot you can do with Windows Server 2016. This is where roles and features come in. Roles and features, in a nutshell, are a collection of software applications and services. When you install a particular role or feature, what you're essentially doing is adding more functionality to your Windows Server 2016 server. After installing Windows Server 2016, one question the administrator must ask themselves is, what exactly do I want this server to do? The answer to this question determines which roles and features should then be installed. For example, if you'd like your server to function as a domain controller and authenticate users on the network, you'd have to install the Active Directory Domain Services role. Likewise, if the server will be responsible for handing out IP addresses to the computers on your network, then you should install the DHCP server role instead. When Windows Server 2016 is first installed, as part of the installation, the install files for all of these roles and features are copied from the installation media onto the server. Having these install files copied locally onto the server gives the administrator the ability to install and uninstall roles and features at any time without having to reinsert the installation media. Of course, if you have a really powerful server, there's nothing stopping you from installing all of the roles and features that Windows Server 2016 has to offer. Technically speaking, there's no limit to the number of roles and features you can install onto the same server. Understand, though, every role and feature you install adds more software and services to the server, and the act of doing this places more and more workload on the server. Therefore, it's considered good practice to install only the roles and features that the server actually requires. Any roles and features that aren't required by the server should be left uninstalled. Now that you understand what roles and features are, the next question you'll probably have is, what exactly is the difference between a role and a feature? Let's first take a look at roles. According to Microsoft, when you install a role, you're making a major change to the server. When a role is installed and properly set up, your Windows Server 2016 server is configured to perform that specific task. For example, a server with the Hyper-V role installed is configured specifically for the task of hosting virtual machines. Likewise, a server that has the DNS role installed is configured to resolve host names into IP addresses. When installing roles, it's important that the administrator carefully considers where the role is to be placed. Keep in mind that any roles installed will place additional overhead on the server. Prior to virtualization, when all servers were physical servers, in a lot of cases, to keep costs low, it was common for a business to purchase one extremely powerful server and install all the required roles onto that server. In an ideal world, Microsoft recommends that you run no more than a handful of roles on one particular server at a time, and so installing all your roles onto one server is far from ideal. Nowadays, with virtualization really starting to take off, it's becoming more common for administrators to create several smaller virtual machines and install just one or two roles onto each virtual machine. Although these virtual machines may be running on the same physical hardware, they are at least isolated into separate operating system environments. Let's now have a look at features. Features are smaller than roles and can be thought of as optional add-ons. 
Understand that features are not technically part of roles. However, once installed, features are able to enhance the functionality of roles. Take, for example, the failover clustering feature. Let's say that you have a server with a Hyper-V role installed. With Hyper-V, this server is able to host its own virtual machines. However, if the Hyper-V server goes offline, the virtual machines running on that server will also go offline. Now imagine that you have two Hyper-V servers. If you were to install the failover clustering feature onto both of these servers, you're able to enhance your Hyper-V infrastructure by creating a highly available failover cluster for your virtual machines. That way, if either one of the Hyper-V hosts were to fail, the virtual machines will simply shift onto another host and will continue to run. Hopefully now you can start to see the difference between roles and features. Although features are not directly part of any role, they are able to supplement roles and provide additional functionality. This has been a quick introduction to roles and features in Windows Server 2016. In the next video I will put this knowledge to use and will demonstrate how to install roles and features onto a Windows Server 2016 server. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Tech Tips from Will and be sure to check out our YouTube page for more Windows Server 2016 training videos. And remember to support our channel by subscribing and liking our videos. Many thanks and we'll see you on the next Tech Tip.